detail from your button-down shirt Should you come prepared? What's that, baby? There was something you were waiting to hear me say Hello, darling You know I'll never leave you alone this way To the channel green eye trombonist here also known as Ilea and today we're doing something that makes me really happy I don't know if it'll make anyone else super happy because uh, I'm a little weird and that's okay embrace your weird as Felicia Day says so if you're in chat go ahead say hi uh, if not I don't know what you're doing hope it's a fun time uh, and today we are actually going to be unboxing an osteological specimen. Um, so what that means is bones, basically osteological bones. Very simple. Um, this is a subscription we'll talk about later. Um, but yeah, I like bones. I like collecting bones. You can probably see in the background this thing here. That's a pig skull. Um, when I was an undergrad in forensic anthropology, um, which is a big reason why I love bones, uh, one of my friends did an experiment about uh, gunshot wounds and had a bunch of pig heads as a result of that. Cleaned them off in order to inspect the wounds and then didn't need them after the experiment. Uh, so I got to keep the one that has two 22 caliber bullets in its head. Um, and I did some additional cleaning, but it is 
not anywhere near um, uh, collector uh, show quality stuff, um, which is a thing. But the bones that uh, we'll get today, which should just be one osteological specimen, I think, plus a bunch of like additional stuff, um, those are a high grade um, collector display uh, specimen. Uh, I'm wearing my bone shirt today. Um, and yeah, so I don't remember exactly when I got into bones. I did enjoy the TV show uh, and went down the route of forensic anthropology for a little while there. Uh, and I still absolutely love it. The biggest hurdle for me ultimately was that my school didn't offer enough lab time uh, for me to get into a grad program for forensic anthropology. I took human osteology, I took forensic anthropology, I took an anthropology practicum uh, where we um, basically uh, looked at indigenous specimens um, with permission from the uh, local tribe from which they came. Um, San Jose State actually has a great reputation for working with, uh, in San Jose, the Muwekma Ohlone, uh, which is the local group, uh, when they do um, archaeological excavations in the area, which are pretty much required for any kind of construction project that is happening. Um, so, yeah they would work with the Muekma and we would house then the remains and um, artifacts at San Jose State and part of the, my anthropology practicum course was documenting uh, everything we found, getting things shipped off uh, for testing. Um, I reconstructed a humerus at one point. Um, we laid out a display of a bear that was found with uh, one of our sites and sometimes things get published from that stuff sometimes they don't but all of this to say that I really love bones even though that's not where I'm going professionally uh, yeah um, <laughs> interesting conversations happening in chat am I a criminal investigator no so for anyone who doesn't uh, know me, know my stuff already. I'm actually currently in grad school for communication. I do a lot of work in the digital sphere with uh, geek culture. Uh, I do things around performance. I'm getting more into um, like critique of a white able-bodied center in my research, but my previous life I did a lot of stuff with bones and I love forensic science and um, yeah, bones are so pretty and nice. I love them. <laughs> so with that, I do think we'll get started. I do have one more donation from our charity fundraiser that ended last uh, Sunday. We raised just shy of uh, $300, which is amazing. I'll send that to the ACLU in the coming weeks. Uh, I have also cut off my hair, but off air since we didn't reach our $500 goal and I will be donating that foot of hair to Wigs for Kids in the coming weeks as well. But since we got a last minute donation uh, at the end of the stream I'll play that so that it's displayed and then we'll do some singing before we go. But for now let's go ahead and get into this. So here's my pretty bone box. So this comes from SkullsUnlimited.com and it is actually one of the cheapest things you can get at Skulls Unlimited. It's a $25 a month uh, subscription with a guarantee that for at least 10 months you will not get a repeat of an osteological specimen. Uh, so this was a birthday gift from my parents who probably did not want to give this to me as a birthday gift, but they know how much I love bones. I put that on my list. So yeah, we'll be able to look at this. It says study, learn, collect with bone box in a little skull emblem there. And now the real test, can I open it? 
looks like we're gonna have to cut some stuff. I've been informed that my pretty Sweeney Todd replica bit blade might be against terms of service. Um, so instead we're gonna use my letter opener, which uh, I actually got at uh, the Oregon, Ashland, Oregon Shakespeare Festival years and years ago. Like, God, in a couple of years, it'll be 20 years that I got this, I think. Um, so it's a pretty knife. And I guess technically it's safer than my razor because it's just a letter opener. There we go. So that's open. Go ahead and put this away. Come on. As you can tell, I have not opened this box up all yet. I have no idea what's inside. And this is my first one, so I really don't know what to expect overall other than what I've read on the website. So we have this Welcome to the Skeleton Crew. Um, since my followers, followers on this channel are ugh, words, words not working today. Uh, since my followers on this channel are part of the Boner Nation, uh, trombones, again, another great reason to love bones. This kind of fits in. So then we open. And let's see, what does this say? All right, looks like pretty soon they're going to actually increase that price to $29.99 um, to account for flat rate shipping fees. Yeah, looks like they haven't changed it for a long time. So uh, that's something to be aware of. $29.99 for the monthly then. We get an advertisement for a photographer and a thank you message. Welcome to Hashtag Bone Box. We are thrilled that you chose to subscribe to Hashtag Bone Box to expand your personal collection of osteological specimens. Our real bone skulls are carefully prepared using dermestid beetles and are sterilized using our signature chemical process, ensuring that you receive the highest quality specimens delivered to your door each month. So what that means is dermestid beetles are um, basically a carry-on beetle. They eat dead uh, remains. So they will eat away all of the flesh, muscle, etc. from the bone. Um, and usually you'll like try and get as much of that removed as possible before giving them to the beetles. Sometimes you don't. It kind of depends on um, where you're doing that thing. And then after they've fed it to the beetles, they do another chemical process to clean and wash the bones and make them sterile. Oh look, uh, and there is a promo code. Good thing I'm not showing this on camera. Uh, for 10% off your order of 25 or more. That's fun. And you can buy uh, recreated like skulls and things there as well, um, replicas. Um, they're super expensive though for like the big ones and obviously we're just gonna get small ones here, but still. And like, Cruelty free. Uh, I am not gonna go out and kill a squirrel for its skull. That's not my style. Let's just do this. I don't have that flat block in my view. Okay. Ooh, pretty. Ooh, okay. So first off. We, we see that they've included a $4 price. This is really small. Let me see if I can bring it up there for focusing. There we go. It's a raccoon claw. So I'm sure there's a lot of these, which is why the price for this individually is just $4. That's awesome. It's very similar uh, to like what it looks like when my cats shed part of their claw or when uh, last week Sean Connery got his claw stuck in a chair and ripped off the entire pinky claw. 
Oh boy. But it's very similar in nature to that. Okay, we put you nicely aside. That's, this is the big guy. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, I have to carefully unwrap this. Guess is what we're dealing with here. Let's see. We'll bring that also closer. There we go. Any guesses what we might be dealing with here? We do know that it's not um, vegetarian in nature with those canines with the front teeth. We know that this creature does eat meat. Yeah, and you can see, I did just glance down at it, but to just confirm, so I haven't done any bone identification in a while, uh, but you can also see that although we do have these back teeth, which are different than the front, um, in nature, the molars here, they're really not like a human molar. Um, our teeth are such that the front is really good for like slicing, tearing kind of action. So things like meat, the back is really good uh, for kind of breaking down things. It's better for like vegetation. That's the way our mouse work and we're omnivores. Um, though not all humans do, humans are designed to eat both meat and vegetation, uh, flora and fauna. But this creature, its back aren't as uh, defined as a humans, for instance. So this is someone who would live on a carnivorous diet. This is a carnivore. And the answer to that question of what is it? It is domestic dog. Sorry that the camera's a little blurry. We got to work on that eventually. But this is a domestic dog specimen. Oh, they will go so nice with my pig. Oh, that would be great. I wish that uh, I could be back in my office at work. Pandemic, moved everything home, can't be there. I was a shared office, so yeah, we had closed that all down. Um, and I'm not going to move back in this fall semester, whether the school year is partly in person or not, just because dealing with all that stuff is not great. Um, but I wish that I could have access to my office and be there pandemic safe so that I could display my pretty bones. They're so pretty. So I'm not going to take it out of the plastic bag for now and I'm going to rewrap it in the bubble wrap just so that I can keep it as safe as possible till I find a really good location for it. Your cranium is amazing. So one thing that it uh, it also says here is that this is a young uh, dog. This is a puppy's skull. And you can tell that you can see if let's see if I can bring it close enough. Do, 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 do. So you can see that there's these lines, like it almost forms this weird triple arch, like an M with a little high point in the middle. Um, these are the spots of epiphyseal fusion. And basically what that means is uh, like for a human kid, you have more bones than an adult has. That's because your bones haven't all fused all the way. So take a um, tibia, for example. There is a proximal part to the tibia, um, then there is a shaft, and then there is a distal part to the tibia. And that is split into three separate bones in like babies. And eventually they fuse together to form uh, what we recognize as a tibia, which has all three parts as one. 
Uh, we see the same thing with skulls. Uh, skulls usually take the longest. Certain parts will fuse before others. Um, so if we're talking about like in the cranium, in a human cranium, you have the frontal, you have parietals, which are the big sections on the side, you have the temporal, which is where the ear would be, which basically comes right under the parietal. It's smaller. And then in the back, you see all this extra bone bit. Um, at the back of the skull is the occipital. Uh, and we name it the occipital, I believe, because that is actually where a sight is kind of processed in the brain. Um, so like if you hit the back of your head hard enough, you can have temporary blindness, issues with your eyes, different stuff. It's because though your eyes are at the front, they connect to the back of your brain. So we call that part the occipital. Uh, and it's the most protected part of the skull. And these are all separate sections. So you have one occipital, one frontal, two parietal, two temporal in your cranium. And as time goes on, they will fuse together. Uh, and so one of the ways that you can age uh, a person or a creature, depending on your personal preference uh, and your area of study, is based on these areas of fusion. Um, what is fused? What isn't fused? Um, that gives you a rough timeline and uh, depending on how many bones you have to work with, knowing that they're from the same specimen, you can narrow that down uh, in age range. In general. So one of the reasons that we know that this is a puppy and not just like, uh, I mean that would even be kind of big for a chihuahua, but not just like a small dog is because we can see that there are areas of fusion still occurring um, and we can see that teeth, teeth is another way to check age range, uh, some of the teeth are not fully erupted yet. Now, this is coming from someone who has almost exclusively worked with human remains. So if there is someone who does more animal-based osteological inspection, uh, who wants to correct me in the comments, I'm down for that. Because I always want to learn more and I want to make sure I'm not creating wrong information. Um, but, ooh, yeah, you can see this section where a tooth has not fully erupted from the bone yet. Like, it's just peeking through. Uh, you can see that with this molar here that it's peeking through as the bone kind of, like, almost dissolves away from it. That's really cool. Wow. And then like you can see all the nasal concha and stuff going on in there and you see how wide like this opening is compared to um, a human I would suspect that has something to do with uh, the orientation how open it is probably the amount of folds and nasal concha also um, probably has something to do with why dogs can smell better than humans. They have more olfactory receptors. Yeah. Crazy. All right, let's see what these last little pieces of information say before we go. All right, this month, hashtag bone box delivers to you Juvenile domestic dog. There are currently between 200 to 400 recognized breeds of domestic dog. Selective breeding has resulted in the variety of physical characteristics or phenotypes found in domestic dogs. Um, so real quick, genotype versus phenotype. Uh, so genotype, we all know in humans you have, um, I'm gonna go full screen webcam. So we know in humans you have two chromosomes, right? One for mom, one from dad. Uh, and they each have an expression of a certain trait on them. Um, for example, blood type, right? So dad gives you an O type, but mom gives you an A type, 
the A is dominant over the O, right? So your genotype is AO, because you have one of each, but your phenotype, which is the expression of your genes, um, how it actually plays out in the body, looks, etc. Uh, because A is dominant to O, your blood type is A. So your phenotype will show the dominant um, unless you have two copies of the recessive or it's a codominant, which is how we get AB types. Um, but hopefully that makes sense about the difference between genotype and phenotype. So what they're talking about here um, is that the physical characteristics, the phenotype, the expression in the genes, uh, how it shows up when it actually plays out. This skull is that of a juvenile may show evidence of recently formed bone tissue, a process called ossification. During this process, the tissue undergoes calcification and layers of bone are created. Another difference between a juvenile and adult domestic dog is the presence of deciduous teeth, also known as milk teeth. These teeth are the first set of teeth in the growth and development of many animals. And we see this in humans too, right? Um, that we have this myth of the tooth fairy because kids' teeth fall out and adult teeth usually will grow in their place. Uh, open the jaw and look behind each tooth, you may see another tooth enclosed in the jaw beginning to emerge, which we did see in the back of one side of the jaw without actually taking it out of the bag yet because I don't want to potentially hurt it. I have cats in my house. The pig skull is big, it's one thing. Uh, my pretty domestic dog uh, school. Yeah, I don't, I don't want them to hurt it. La 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 la. Uh, these teeth will begin to fall out around four months of age. The last teeth to be replaced are the largest, the canine teeth, at around six months of age. The deciduous teeth will ultimately be replaced with 42 adult teeth. Some breeds have fewer than 42 standard adult teeth. Smaller breeds like the Shih Tzu or Pug or uh, have a small palate and cannot accommodate as many permanent teeth. So that's something also to be aware of is, um, this is something we also see in humans. We saw that uh, over time, our mouths have actually gotten smaller on average and wisdom teeth actually would cause huge complications. Like some people would choke on their own wisdom teeth because they're just so far back. Um, and because of this and all the problems that wisdom teeth were causing, we actually saw a decline in wisdom teeth. We were going through an evolutionary process of losing wisdom teeth as a human species. And then dentistry came in and was able to remove wisdom teeth um, through surgical means, uh, um, topical and yeah, procedures. Um, and because of that, we now no longer have a selection process for no wisdom teeth because they can be taken out and have no effect on a person's life, such as killing them before they reproduce. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we now have people who have full sets of wisdom teeth, some who are just missing a few of the wisdom teeth, some who have no wisdom teeth absolutely ever. They never come in. Um, we see all these different things because we are no longer going through a selection process in our evolution to get rid of wisdom teeth. We found a different way to do it. Yeah, all right, that's cool. And what does this little thing say? Okay, ooh, it comes with something that I can hook around the skull uh, with this little like info card thing so that it's connected there nice and we do include the scientific name canis familiaris uh, for the domestic dog nice and a little bit of extra information um, the domestic dog is believed to be a direct descendant of modern wolves. Dogs have been bred as pets for thousands of years with the earliest known domestication taking place as long as 12,000 years ago. Today, dogs serve man in many ways as guides, search and rescue, hunting purposes, to sniff out drugs or other contraband, and even to track criminals. 
There are over 400 recognized breeds ranging from Chihuahua as the smallest example to the Irish Wolfhound as the largest. That's awesome. If I could have any dog in the world, I would have a Tibetan Mastiff because they're just so pretty and fluffy. I'd have to have really great air conditioning. Um, they would get overheated very easily. Uh, and they don't live very long. It's an unfortunate fact for the dogs that have been bred to extremely large sizes. Their lives tend to be shorter as a result. Uh, and I'm not really a big fan of supporting the breeder industry on average just because of all the complications that have happened with purebred dogs because of our selective breeding process. Not necessarily any fact of the breeder. There are rep reputable breeders out there. Um, there are also puppy mills. Not all breeders are puppy mills. Um, but my bigger problems come down to uh, that we've bred these animals so far to that we are causing issues for them. Um, and we continue to do so because we like a look. Uh, and we rate dogs based on that look. So I would love a Tibetan Mastiff, kind of. Uh, they are one of my favorite purebreds in theory, but ultimately uh, I'm a pound puppy kind of person. Uh, if an animal is on the street, doesn't have um, an owner, you can't find them, different things like that, that's the animal I'd rather take in. So, cool, we got domestic dog. This was nice, I like this. Uh, I'm not sure that my lovely parents are going to be willing to continue my subscription uh, since there is that increase in price that's going to be happening. Uh, but I know I'm getting at least one more because I couldn't cancel that before it went through. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll probably get one more specimen here. And we'll do that unboxing and then I'll just end up being done. But yeah, this raccoon claw thrown in was a nice little addition. And check any questions in chat. Don't see any questions. How is everyone doing today? I hope you're having a good day. not going to be wrapped up as nicely. And this is something that I just do in general anyways, is like I rewrap presents, uh, like try and consolidate, keep them in bags so that they're easier to transport. I tend to not fully open a gift uh, in the moment unless I have a place to put that gift. Um, or if it's something like a book or something where I can just pop it open right away and easily fit it back into a bag. Go back here. Our most important thing is just that my cats don't wreck this skull. That's what I care about in life. As I learned uh, from doing an egg drop in third, fourth grade, one of those, uh, tight packaging, as long as it's sat soft and cradles properly, doesn't put too much pressure or at least puts equal pressure around something, um, is more protective than potentially harmful. Uh, my egg survived and I just like packed as many pillowcases and soft things around this egg as possible before putting it into a box and then dropping it. And it worked. Okay, so we can put that there until we find a good place for it. Awesome. All right. 
So as promised, we're gonna do that alert that we haven't done yet. Do 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 replay. What did you replay? I don't see you replay. I have my alert box open. Oh, this is not gonna be good, is it? It's gonna cause issues. I'm gonna get it back up. Why aren't you playing? Streamlabs, stop being weird. I wonder if you disconnected. I'm gonna reload Streamlabs. Worst comes to worst, I read the message out myself. Let's see, not do anything. Launch that box. I'm gonna do a test donation. That worked. That showed up. John donated $89. This is a test donation for $89. Oh, oh. Okay, so it just does not want to play this message for whatever the reason. Um, maybe because it was a week ago. I don't really know. But from Cardsmiths, uh, donated $50, happy birthday trivia master. Cardsmiths is uh, someone I play trivia with twice a week. Um, yeah, my family has started accusing me of when I guess I'm never wrong. And some of them don't think that's a bad thing. I just, I feel singled out. But I apparently also listen to a lot of old music. All right, since we got that donation, uh, I know he didn't want any specific rewards or anything for it, um, but I am going to sing mostly because it's an excuse to sing. <laughs> uh, and that's how I work a lot of times. Let's just have an excuse to sing. Sure. Let's make it be a thing. All right. Yeah, we don't do this long enough. Start again. Could we start again? Could we start? 
Yeah, so I am still obsessed with this Clark on stage. Ooh, yes. We're also going to sing this one. Uh, go check out his YouTube. Subscribe if you can. And it's amazing. Don't look half the brain. Can see that human I mean, kind has got gone so insane. much content out there for To the point where I don't know if I will upset sing, the status quo. If I throw poison in the water main. Listen close to everybody's heart and hear that breaking sound. Hopes and dreams are shattering apart and crashing to the ground. I cannot believe in my eyes how the world's filled with filth and lies. But it's plain to see evil inside of me. So we can do three more songs. I love Lion King 2, but I don't think most people are there for it. Uh, and I love Elaborate Lives, but that's mostly Rodimus. Ugh. No. Ah, here we go. Aida, but not mostly Rodimus. to tell you we can never meet again simple really isn't it a word or two and then a lifetime of not knowing where or how or why or when you think of me or speak of me and wonder what befell that someone you once loved so long ago As living shuffles by You don't have to ask me And I need not reply Every moment of my life From now until I die I will think or dream of you And fail to understand How a perfect love can be Confounded out of hand is it written in the stars? I will pay for some crime. Is that all that we are good for? Just a stretch of more time. Or some God's experiment in which we have no say. In which we're given paradise. But oh. You can help my people. This could be our chance to do something important. 
don't you see? Nothing can be halted, there is nothing to decide. No escape, no change of heart, nor any place to hide. Oh, you are all I ever want, but this I am denied. Sometimes in my darkest thoughts, I wish I'd never learned what, what it is, is to be in love and have, have that, that love return. Written in the stars, are we paying for some crime? Is that all that we are good for? Just a stretch of mortal time. as much as I may want to belt. Uh, my throat says no. All right, I am gonna go back to full screen webcam. Uh, one, because I wanna reduce the chances of this getting uh, flagged for copyright. If it does, when it goes to YouTube, I'll have to cut out this entire uh, song section. Yeah. We don't need that. We don't need this. What else? What else is there to sing? Oh, we don't need to do that sitting down right now. Sure, we'll do this one. If I could break this spell, I'd run to him today. And somehow I know he's on his way to me. Darren, you and I were meant to be. Far longer than forever. I'll hold you in my heart. It's almost like you're here with me, although we're far apart. Far longer than forever, as constant as a star. I close my eyes at night. Unshakable bond Destined to last for a lifetime and beyond For longer than forever For longer than forever I swear that I'll be true I swear that I'll be true I've made a never lasting vow To, to find, find a way to you, you. puts us at two more songs I think it puts us at two more songs so yes let's do this one no you won't how would you like how would I like how would you like I don't know this intro part living with me it feels good like this so that's how we should be so would you like yes I would like Okay, it's set. No more to say. Screw the engineer. You're the one good thing that I've found out here. You are sunlight and I move. Joined by 
the gods of fortune, midnight and high noon, shivering the sky. We have been blessed, you and I. You are here like a mystery I am from a world that's so different from all that you are how in the light of one night did we come so far outside day starts to dawn your moon still floats on high the birds away the stars shine too my hands still shake I reach for you and, and we, we meet in, in the, the sky. sky I need to breathe before doing that with some Chris and Ryan not Clark on stage I'm still working on this it's not gonna be perfect most of my stuff's not perfect let's be honest um, but it, it's a work in progress <laughs> Could it 
about to cut out that section. That's everything for our stream today. Thank you everyone who showed up. It was awesome unboxing uh, the bone, the puppy skull, infantile, not actually. It was a juvenile. We'll get into that probably at some point in the future. That was awesome. I can't wait to do it again. Remember to tune in next Sunday. Uh, we'll be interviewing the amazing Kyla Prince. Uh, they have done some really cool work uh, and both in their like performance life as well as in their academic interests. So we're going to be talking about things related to that on Sunday. Uh, keep tuned to my Twitter at Green Eyed T Bone. Might do a stream before then, so we can do a little Pokemon Shield in our free time. But for now, I gotta get back to writing my thesis, doing some edits on that, and as always, let's end the same way we do. Apparently, with Sean wanting to sing along. So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now until we meet again. It's been great to sing and play together, but now it's time to say goodbye. So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now until we meet again. Goodbye for now until we meet again. Bye everyone. Have a great Sunday. See you next week.